Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> Have you ever wondered how planes fly? It's hard to believe. It's almost as hard to believe as a flying dog. Wah! Let's see if we can figure out just how planes fly. Let's start by taking a look at the first wing, the Wright Brothers Glider. This is the only known photo of the Wright Brothers Glider. In the photo, neither Wilbur nor Orville is lying on the glider. In the photo, the glider is flying. In fact, the Wright's glider generates lift the same way a kite generates lift. You can tell from the picture that the wind is blowing in this direction. Notice how the glider is at an angle, so the glider is pushing down on the air. According to Newton's third law, the air pushes back. So when the glider pushes down on the air with a force equal to or greater than the weight of the glider, the glider will float in the air. Modern aircraft wings deflect air downward to help them achieve lift, but they also take advantage of Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle. To achieve additional lift. Bernoulli's principle, Bernoulli's Bernoulli's principle, principle states that fast moving air generates a lower, 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 lower pressure than slow moving air. Let's see how Bernoulli's principle can generate lift. Dr. Smith has a toothpick, paper square, and a rubber tube. The toothpick is placed through the paper, then through the rubber tube. Check this out. What do you think will happen if Dr. Smith blows air really hard down through the tube and onto the paper? Shouldn't the paper fall? Let's try it. The paper doesn't fall. In fact, it does the opposite. The paper moves upwards. When Dr. Smith blows through, through the tube, lift is generated. It's because of Bernoulli's principle. When Dr. Smith blows through the tube, the blown air moves very quickly along the top side of the paper. So the air on the top side of the paper is moving faster than the air on the bottom side of the paper. Therefore, there is less pressure on the top side than on the bottom side of the paper. This pressure difference is the lift and the paper moves upward against the tube and remains there until Dr. Smith stops blowing air. When he stops blowing air, the pressures are the same on the top and bottom sides of the paper, and the paper falls. We can see Bernoulli's principle here, too. Each ping pong ball has been glued to the end of a straw and placed vertically. If we blow air between the two ping pong balls, what do you think will happen? The ping pong balls move together because of Bernoulli's principle. The region with the fast moving air is between the ping pong balls. So both ping pong balls get pushed into this low pressure region by the higher pressure non-moving air region. What do you think would happen if we had fast moving air on all sides of a ping pong ball? Let's try it using a ping pong ball placed on a hair dryer.
With fast moving air on all sides of the ping pong ball, the ball floats and remains in the column of air because once the pull of gravity and the lift of Bernoulli's principle become balanced, the ball stays steady. Let's play around with this a little bit. What do you think would happen if a tube is placed below the ping pong ball in the column of air? Let's try it. The placement of a tube in the column of air below the ping pong ball allows the ball to increase its height in the column of air. This is because the tube collimates the air, increasing the speed of air around the ball, allowing the ball to go higher than without the tube. What do you think will happen if the tube is placed in a column of air containing two ping pong balls? Okay, now what does all this have to do with flying? Modern aircraft generate lift two ways. One way is the same way Kites and the Wright brothers glider generated lift, Newton's third law or the deflection of air. However, modern aircraft also generate lift through Bernoulli's principle. Modern aircraft do not have flat wings like Kites and the Wright's glider. Modern aircraft wings are curved on top and look like this. Let's say the air is moving in this direction. So air is moving under and over the top of the wing. Since the wing is curved on top, the air on the top of the wing has a further distance to travel than the air on the bottom of the wing. Since the air on top of the wing has farther to go, it travels faster. Faster moving air generates lower pressure, so a curved wing generates a pressure difference between the top and bottom of the wing, generating lift. Here is something for you to try at home. Find a bottle and try to blow something into it. I don't think it is possible. At least I can't find anything that will work. Why is this? I believe it is due to the curved shape of the neck of the bottle. Bernoulli's principle creates fast moving air along the surface of the bottle's <coughs> neck, creating a high pressure inside the bottle, which ends up blowing out anything placed in the neck of the bottle. You try it. See if you can blow something into a bottle. Let's review. Early wings were flat, similar to a kite, and create lift through deflection of air. Modern wings create lift through deflection of air and Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle states that faster moving air generates less pressure than slow moving air. Modern wings are shaped such that there's faster moving air on top of the wing than on the bottom of the wing. The resulting pressure difference is the lift necessary for planes to fly. <laughs>